Hello and welcome to the Knowledge, our Facebook Live Q&As. I'm Tom from the communications team. Thank you for joining me today. Um, we have a wide variety of academics with a wide variety of knowledge at Keel and we thought we'd get them live on Facebook for, for some interesting Q&As and you can even ask questions yourself. So today I am joined by Dr. Richard Stevens. Hello, Richard. Hi, Tom. How are we? Uh, I'm all right. Yeah. Lockdown day number, whatever it is. But yeah, we're, we're still there. How's it been for you? Any any interesting walks that you've had? Anything interesting that you've done during lockdown? Um, we, we've been very lucky. Our families all uh, are all safe and well, uh, and uh, you know we've just been works carried on, and uh, we we just sort of got through it okay. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Thanks. So do you want to quickly give us a rundown of what what your area of expertise is at Keel and what it is that you do? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm a a uh, senior lecturer in psychology at Keel. Uh, I've been uh, working at Keel since 1999, so uh, quite a long time, seen many changes. Uh, my areas of expertise in psychology are around kind of biological psychology, which is sort of where the mind uh, meets the, the sort of brain, where the physical meets the, uh, the psychological. Uh, and I'm interested in things like emotion and how the body responds to emotion, like rapid heart rate and things like that. Um, and I'm also interested in cognition and how kind of the brain is programmed, but it's how those things intertwine. And one of the main things I'm interested in is uh, the psychology of emotion and how uh, emotion can influence what we do and how we can change it. Fascinating. And are you carrying on teaching at the moment, Richard? How's, how's teaching gone in terms of students and, and that academic life? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, totally still flat out busy, uh, working from home, um, um, but flat out busy. Um, I had a number of lectures to give after the lockdown uh, was uh, came into place. Um, so I kind of did some audio narrated PowerPoint slides. So it was, it was like giving the lecture, but it was the, the, the audio was embedded within the PowerPoint, which I had to kind of do uh, here at home. Uh, you know, we had to move really quickly to get the courses online, uh, and our main our main aim in psychology has been uh, just just keep the information coming so everybody knows where they are. And I think the students we've got have appreciated uh, that we that we've kept them informed and they know where to go to find the information they need. Brilliant. And again, so today's live stream is on. Um the psychology of swearing so if you've got any comments as we go through or any questions you'd like to ask uh, please do comment them down below and I'll try and get to them um, but first of all uh, I guess many people argue that swearing is is quite a negative thing to do um, but you suggest differently and that it can be quite positive um, can you just explain why that is yeah well I think it's both you know you, we can you can swear in a very negative way. You can swear to insult someone, to bully them, to put them down. Everybody knows this. Um, but we also swear uh, in positive ways. Um, I mean, I mean, I've been doing this research for about 10 years now, and I've watched the area grow as different labs around the world have started to do swearing research. And, you know, swearing is a useful part of language. There's a really neat, there's a really interesting idea. You know, some people say swearing is a sign of low IQ and inarticulateness, it's just a kind of, you know, being a bit stupid. But uh, some research carried out in the States showed they got people to do a, a standard language task. How many words can you think of in a minute, beginning with the letter B or C or something like that? And then they did um, the same task with swearing. How many different swear words can you think of in a minute? And um, they found that the people who knew the most general words also knew the most swear words. So there's more to swearing than, than you know, being stupid. It's a part of the language toolbox, if you like. And it's a, it, it, it's, it's a language we can use to, to have various functions. And it can be negative, but it can also be positive. Um, you, you know, it can help spare you on, it can help you when you're in pain, it can help you express emotion that you can't otherwise express. And communicating is really important. So I don't know if you know, I keep looking down here, Tom, because that's where your picture is on my screen. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try and look at the camera, but yeah. It's all right. You're, you're off to the right for me as well. So I kind of look off screen as well. So don't <laughs> worry about it. Um, but you mentioned pain there. So swearing can actually help us when we're feeling pain. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's kind of the most well-known research uh, that, that, that we did at Keele uh, 10 years ago now. 
So um, it was me and some psychology students at Keele, undergraduates. Uh, if you do psychology undergraduate at Keele, you do a final year project, which is like a year long piece of research supervised uh, one to one by a member of staff with expertise in that area. And um, yeah, so me and some students, we were interested in why do people swear after they hurt themselves? It's, it's such a common response. Um, does it help? And we thought it might help. We thought it might not. Uh, so we ran some studies where, uh, now this is where it gets interesting, how can you study pain in the lab without harming people? Um, and there's a nice uh, trick for that called the cold presser, otherwise known as an ice cold water challenge. So people put their hands in ice cold water, hold the hand there for as long as they can, and we can get them to do different things while they've got their hand in the water. And in our case, we got them to repeat a swear word of their choosing or a neutral word. And our research has shown across quite a few studies now that swearing will help you keep your hand in the water for longer. Um, so yeah, it helps you cope with pain. That is fascinating. So is, is there any reason why that is? Or is there any reason why specific words in general? Because there are many languages, there have been many different things that have been classed as swear words over the over the years and the decades. Why, why these set of words? Why do they help us cope with pain? Yeah, so good question. Um, part of it seems to be the emotional response that you get to swearing, even when you're the speaker. And our studies have shown that heart rate increases when you say a swear word compared to a neutral word. And other labs around the world have shown, we call this autonomic nervous system activity. It's like your, your fight or flight stress response is just kind of uh, responding a little bit um, to these quite emotional stimuli of swear words. Uh, and part of the, so the autonomic arousal, it's, it's acute stress, it's sometimes called fight or flight. And one aspect of the fight or flight response that's not so well known as others is um, stress induced analgesia. So part of it is by swearing and giving yourself this emotional jolt, you're tapping into uh, a, a kind of a, one of the body's pain defense mechanisms, natural pain defense mechanisms. But more recent research uh, that we've done, we just had a paper come out um, two weeks ago, actually, some research sponsored by Neurofen, which has been quite fun, because obviously Neurofen are a pain killing brand. And they'd seen uh, my research and they'd actually started running adverts on the TV, sort of showing people doing things like playing squash and kind of tweaking their back and go, ooh, and then they swear. Well, the little sort of, you know, bubbles with kind of uh, characters, you know, actually show, see the swear words. And the strap line was, oh, hurt yourself, first swear, then take a Neurofen. And uh, so they got in touch and actually sponsored some research that came out uh, last week. When we tried to look at the properties of the words more, so you were saying about, you know, what is it about the words themselves? And one theory is it's the sound of the words that make, that gives them their power. And there's a, an idea called plosiveness, which is when, which is the kind of the way a word makes a sound as it leaves your mouth. A plosive is just like I'm doing that. It's like a, a, a halting and then a quick release of air. And one theory is it's the, the, the physical structure of the swear words that might give them some power. So we ran a study where we made up some swear words. Um, if you're interested, the words that we made up, well, I didn't make them up. An advertising agency made up 60 candidate swear words and a panel uh, of experts and lay people chose two words that they thought would be um, useful for the study. So one was fouch, which has that kind of structure, a little bit, a little bit kind of a, like a mm. fouch, like a, a release of air. And one was twist pipe, which we thought might be distracting. Uh, in any case, these new words didn't actually have any beneficial effects. Um, so it's not just the surface properties and sounds of the words. It's more to do with the fact that we learn them and, and how we've grown up with them. So does that mean that, is, is there a, did, you, did you find that a specific swear word was more powerful than others or is that quite personal to the individual? Uh, we've never we've we've got no published studies that look into kind of comparing different swear words. Although we've got kind of projects that didn't make it to publication that suggests what most people would agree is a stronger swear word, the F word, for example, uh, had a, a 
let people hold their hands in the water longer than a milder swear word. Um, I'm not going to give you an example, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's interesting actually because swearing, although everyone knows what swearing is, it's quite hard to define it. And um, studies have shown that whilst everyone would say the F word is one of the strongest swear words, this sort of survey of 200 TV viewers, 10% said the F word was a mild swear word or not swearing. So it is very, it is a, like, it's a personal, it's a personal thing. Really. And you've also looked into swearing whilst uh, exercising. And there was a, I, I remember a study that swearing makes you stronger was the headline. And could you just talk about, what, explain that for me? Yeah, so um, in this study, uh, it was a follow up to our swearing and pain stuff. Because we were seeing swearing um, bringing about fight or flight response and autonomic arousal, it was logical to think, well, you know, we all know that that sort of adrenaline response makes you stronger. It's, it's, it's a well-known finding. So if we get people to swear in a physical strength task, then it should improve performance. So this was a collaboration with uh, uh, an exercise trainer in, um, in Brooklyn, in New York, um, at Long Island University, Brooklyn. And over there, they ran a study with people on an exercise bike. Uh, and they ride, rode the exercise bike. They made it very, put, they put a huge amount of resistance on for 30 seconds and people had to pedal as hard as they could through that resistance. And in one condition, they repeated a swear word in another, they repeated a neutral word and they, they generated more power um, in the swearing condition. And then at Kiel, we ran a study with a thing called a hands dynamometer, which is like a, like a gripper. It's a sort of a gripping device with a little needle on it. And the harder you grip it, the more the needle goes round and measures sort of kilograms of force that you're producing. And the study showed that people, when repeating a swear word, would generate a greater amount of force. And I've got a final year project student currently writing up her data just using the same paradigm that's, that's replicated that finding. So it just seems to be quite a reliable finding. And you, you briefly mentioned it earlier, but... Swearing can often be seen as um, a, a kind of pointing out someone's intelligence or lack of intelligence as has been as perceived in the past. But you've kind of done studies on this and and how it can what it can tell us about the intelligence of a person. Yeah, well, we we haven't um, done studies on that as such. There's a, a, a as I said, a group in the states use this kind of how many swear words can you think of in a minute task. But we did, we did use that task in, in a neat study. Well, I thought it was neat anyway, um, because having shown in the pain studies that swearing makes you more emotional, we thought it'd be fun to test that theoretical link the other way around and saying, well, does becoming more emotional make you more sweary? And so we got people to play a kind of shoot them up video game, turn the settings so they were in, what's it called, God mode, so they, they weren't going to get shot, they just spent 10 minutes roaming around this area uh, shooting people. This reliably made them feel more state aggression. They, they felt more aggressive after they finished this. Um, and then we got them to do the how many swear words can you think of in a minute? And compared to our control condition of playing a golf video game, people could think of significantly more swear words in that state. So there's a, like a nice link between swearing and emotion in both directions. Now we've had someone well, ask... Well, um, did you run the study in any UK languages? Was it only English speaking people that, that did these, the, the pain test and the strength test? Uh, interesting question. Uh, all the studies I run have been UK based studies with swearing in English. But my PhD student, Ollie Robertson, um, before she came to Kiel actually, ran a swearing and pain study where she used Japanese native speakers as one of the conditions alongside English native speakers. And that's quite interesting because the Japanese language doesn't really have swearing in it. Um, so the word, now I'm a bit rusty here, you caught me, I'm just speaking off, uh, off the top here. The word they chose was, I think it meant poo or something like that. So it's quite, it's kind of a, it was related to what, what could be a taboo word mm -hmm. in the language. And she, sh she found that Japanese speakers got the same benefits from using that word as uh, UK speakers from using swear words. And, and that was interesting because one idea of swearing and pain is you just do it because it's scripted, because you're so used to doing it, it's just a habit. Whereas these people didn't have that habit, but it still benefited them. So it's fascinating. So I think we'll finish off. So what is, is 
when you started this, has this kind of changed your opinion of swearing? How did you feel about swearing before this? And what would you say about swearing now? Is it, has it changed your opinion of it? So I think our, I think our research has in many ways just backed up what people already know. Pe- people already use swear words in the context that we've been testing them out. My mate did a sponsored bike ride to Barcelona going over the Pyrenees on a tandem. And when he was going up the hills, he was swearing quite a bit. And, you know, people just kind of turn to this language because it's helpful. But what our research has done is demonstrated, like supported, there's evidence that it helps. So I suppose in a sense, my relationship with swearing has changed a bit, but I don't swear all that much these days. Um, so uh, in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. But it's, it is an, it's a way to cope with pain is, is kind of a good takeaway from it, that you shouldn't feel bad when you're in pain if you want to just swear and release that that frustration or anger or emotion no I, I think i think swearing is there for when you need it one of our findings is that the more we swear in everyday life the less benefit it has for when you need it so one take home could be you know don't feel ashamed or you know sorry for using it when the moment calls but save it for when you need to express that thought or emotion Fantastic. Well, thank you, Dr. Richard Stevens. Um, thank you to all those watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Richard. Cheers, Tom. Bye. Bye. Bye.